had the pleasure of meeting the Seminole County Fire Rescue Team when we were at the team competition portion of the Hazardous Materials Training Symposium in Daytona Beach, Florida. We were pretty excited to get down to their Station 35 so we could check out their Squad 2 Heavy Rescue Apparatus, but also to celebrate their 30th anniversary of their SHOT Team, or Special Hazards and Operations Team. In the 30 years of developing their special operations program, there's been continual fire truck apparatus improvements and ongoing high level training at their world class facilities. With their ISO Class 1 rating, Seminole County Fire Departments have a program other departments can learn from. Make sure to join us at the end of the video to learn more. Let's join Lieutenant Ben Fulton and the crew at Seminole County Fire Station 35 and they can tell us all about this great truck. This is a 2018 Pierce Velocity. Um, this is the third generation of our heavy rescue. It started with a single axle back in 94 and has led up to the tandem axle uh, heavy. I'm Chris Schinner. I work for Station 35 C-Shift on the SHOT team for Seminole County Fire Department. Uh, my name is Elgin Myers I'm with Seminole County Fire Department here at Station, signed to Station 35. We're going to show you Squad 2. We'll go, go through compartment for compartment. One of the things that kind of separates this truck from a lot of other heavy rescues or, or hazmat special ops trucks is that it's all hazards truck. So we take care of hazmat on this truck. We also do confined space heavy extrication, rope rescue, dive rescue, and uh, trench as well, uh, and structural collapse. Yes. So we'll open up the first compartment and we'll kind of go through it. On squad two, we, uh, we try to run a lot of quick deployment bags and boxes. So in here we have our man machine box. Um, above that, we have an airbag uh, backpack, just basic uh, fittings, hoses, stuff like that for quick deployment. We've been going to a lot of battery, especially with DeWalt. So we've been transitioning from, we still do run with corded in case something catastrophic happens with any of the equipment, but this reciprocating saw and this glass master, you'll see, you'll notice a lot of uh, battery operated tools on this truck. It's what we've been transitioning to. Up here we got a cord reel, high pressure airline, down, regulated down to low pressure if we need to be. This area kind of has a little bit of a hodgepodge of different stuff. You'll see we have these boxes down here. They're each labeled. There's actually 16 total boxes. Some of them have air operations. Some of them are ratchet straps. Some of them are power tools. It's just somewhere where we were able to fit a, a, a lot of different stuff into one container that we can just bring onto a scene. So it works out really well. We have some uh, battery operated combi tool right here. Have a strong arm battery operated, portable pump for hydraulics just in case we need to get far away from the truck. This compartment, a little bit more structural collapse type of stuff. We, we have different power tools, uh, K-saw, band saw, a circular saw up there. We have our, our chipper and uh, our, our big drill for doing uh, structural collapse. We might do like a stitching technique where we're drilling and then chipping in between our drill marks. And then underneath, we have some ground pads to start off on a, on a trench operation. And we have our big gold Paratech struts for mostly structural collapse. Uh, moving back here, we have our high pressure airbags, our medium pressure airbags with our hoses and uh, valves. Full set of Rescue 42 uh, jacks for stabilization and lifting. Multiple different gas clamps here, all of our footage tools, everything from um, polyethylene to uh, steel lines. This is our transverse compartment, so you're able to go on the other side and pretty much get everything that you could on either side. So the other side, you'll see we have the shovels and everything uh, kind of geared more towards like a gas leak. So moving back, we have more band-aids for all of our drums and totes that might be leaking, wedges, putty, 
uh, more gas clamps, Mustang clamps, timber lines, even small little vice grips. And we have our water propane injection kit in the back. Band-Aids for steel lines. Our A and B kit is tucked back in here. Compression fittings. So pretty much this is just our leak stoppage right here of all different sorts. Full arrangement of fire extinguishers. F500 is primarily what we use in our water cans. Uh, it's great for hydrocarbons. While we're on, on this side, we'll go over our gold strut package that we got from Paratech. They're really nice because they have a lot of throw. You know, these are a six foot strut. They, they hold a lot of weight. We have extensions as well. So this would be one complete set. We have four struts on here, four extensions, four bases. Yep. The bases and the hydrofusion are in the back compartment. We can go over those as well. The thing with special ops is kind of use your imagination, but I think of something like a, a structural collapse. We need to hold up a wall or uh, hold, hold something that's heavy. Doesn't necessarily have to be a structure. It could be a heavy truck, a dump truck, a fire truck, uh, you know, so we, use your imagination. We also use these for capturing the weight when we're actually lifting a heavy vehicle too. Um, yep. We'll use these to capture that load on top of using traditional wood cribbing. Yeah. So in the rear of the compartment, we have another set of hydraulic tools with 200 foot pre-connected hydraulic lines. We also have our hydrofusion from Paratech, which is really nice. Lift something really heavy, like kind of a bread and butter call for what this would be used for is, uh, you know, some sort of heavy, like a school bus or a dump truck on top of another vehicle. And uh, we'd be lifting up that dump truck, catching it with the gold struts and able to make access to that car that's underneath safely. So with the hydrofusion system and our gold struts, we have adapters uh, so we can go between different Paratex, uh, large uh, and small ones. We also have our foot bases right here. Feel nice. Carry four of these in the back. Over here, we have something called a TL9 and it's used in conjunction with a spreader. If you needed to lift something like a vehicle, and now you have some sort of a footprint versus just using an unstable ground or even like cribbing. This one is really nice because it stops you from going too far, too wide it, at that safe point to where you can make access easily. Here we have a, a pedal cutter from Hearst and it's a pretty cool little tool. Just something small profile to be able to get under there and get those pedals out without manipulating that patient causing any injury to the legs or feet. So it's a nice little tool. We have a winch in here and we have six attachment points around the truck, uh, one in the rear, two on the sides, one in the front, and then two on this side. So it makes it really versatile if we got to do any kind of securing to an object that might be dangling over a bridge or if we got to do any kind of pulling back towards us. And kind of works maybe in conjunction with this junkyard bag where we have different attachments we have slings and chains and stuff that we can use to connect whatever it is we need to support or pull so here we have our saw compartment we carry a variety of different saws uh, we actually carry some battery operated saws now we have a mini k12 saw uh, dewalt makes phenomenal for just lightweight and getting garage doors open uh, we have a battery operated pole saw too that's also great for uh, drywall that might be double thick, uh, tongue and groove ceilings, anything like that. Um, we have a gas powered uh, a pole saw, some chainsaws, it's K12. We have a concrete cutting chainsaw, and that's it, chainsaw, just a regular chainsaw for trees. Up here, we have some of our hoses for our welding pump to do a pump off operation. We also have our shut off valve and hard and soft stingers are up there as well. Down here we have some of our heavy duty cribbing, our six by sixes. I believe we have 24 of them. This is our welding pump. We actually keep this welding pump on each of our satellite stations as well. And they're good to pump off 
anything from a, a vehicle, truck, or even a, a saddle tank will suffice with this pump. If we have anything bigger, like a tanker rollover scenario, we would have to get one of our, our pump off trailer that we keep at the training center where we keep what we call Big Mo. It's a really big welding pump. I believe it's 350 gallons a minute versus this is 35 gallons a minute. So on here we carry quick dry buckets. It's just filled with absorbent. Uh, we find it very useful to store them in five gallon buckets uh, because if we're gonna pick the product back up, we can go ahead and just mark this as a hazard, seal it down and let the uh, tow truck carry it off. Or if we run into a call to where we need more five gallon buckets, if we're pumping something off, we could easily dispose of this on the side of the road and then we have access to five gallon buckets. So over the years, we've kind of found out it's better to store it that way. The bags don't tear, you don't have kitty litter all over the place. And our normal containment amount for this truck is we have that 55 gallon drum, a 35 gallon drum, and at least 10 buckets is what we, that will be the minimum. A lot of times we have more than 10, but that's guaranteed what we'll have on the truck. So in here we have a full cast system. It's three banks that operate off six tanks that are located up top under our coffins. We have capability of filling on scene. We do use these as actual storage, so we carry around an extra seven bottles with us that we can either disperse out on a scene or we can just refill our bottles on a call. Mirroring the other side, we have 200 feet of uh, high pressure air, 200 feet of electrical, and we also keep our torches on this side. So we have a plasma cutter, we have a petrogen torch, and an oxyacetylene torch. So we also carry our air cart, which most of the time we're just gonna be using for confined space uh, for breathing air. And what we'll do is you'll do one bottle at a time, rotate your bottles as you go. We have our LP connection box right here. It's got an assortment of different connections that we might run across between our, you know, our tanks, our bobtails, anything like that. Uh, right below it, is actually where we keep our burn off and our flaring hoses. Uh, we have our uh, buzzer down here for anything that's gonna be vapor, small volume, small quantity. We're not gonna do anything big with that. We do carry the Red Dragon, which is capable up to uh, 500 gallons an hour. And that's gonna be typically what we're gonna use for anything liquid, more flaring and burning. Down here, we also have a small bag of some makeshift propane fittings, brass fittings. This is kind of how it started, the squad before this one, and then we ended up obtaining this kit that comes pre-made, which is great, but just because these, these things have actually come and saved the day before, we carry it on because you never know, you might need some sort of obscure fitting, or double female, double male, what have you. Uh, so we still keep this type of stuff. Today we're actually going to be uh, taking some of our new guys through our flaring process on a 250 gallon tank. We're going to be using our vapor lines, or sorry, liquid lines right here, and we are going to flare liquid off of our Red Dragon. Yep, and the, the Red Dragon is stored up top, which you'll see shortly here. So up here we have four coffins. Each coffin has got a variety of different tools and equipment in it. This is the stuff that we store up here because it's gonna be on the scenes that's gonna be a little bit longer deployment time and we're gonna have time to actually put down the stairs to get up here. Everything you see on the outside is gonna be for our quick deployment, things we need to get to immediately on fast access calls. Um, starting up here, we carry six level A suits, have different boot sizes and boots that we're gonna wear with our level A. We carry all of our B suits up here our Scott air packs. Uh, these air packs differ from the ones we run on the truck. We use these in our level A suits. They have uh, no rip bag on them. They have a very simple gauge on them and they will not, they won't alarm. There's no pass device on this. So it makes it very nice when you're in a suit standing still for a long period of time working. And it's very, very lightweight. It's stripped down. We also carry uh, MT-94s that we ran into on a call years ago. We had a uh, confined space call where two of our responders had to go into 
sewage water that had been unfiltered for a rescue. And at the time we didn't have anything, you know, that, that would be flash protectant and something that could seal them from the contamination of the, the sewage. So we learned our lesson uh, and we looked into getting these MT-94s, uh, which are nice because they're a level B suit uh, and they also have a level of flash protection for us uh, for an H2S call. Uh, we carry our pappers back here that we're gonna run with our standard filters. We're gonna use these for uh, different variations of uh, entries that we might need to be in there a longer period of time than what SCB would allow us to, but still getting that respiratory protection. This is the compartment where we keep the Red Dragon, which we'll be showing you all today when we uh, do a demonstration. But it's all in this big red bag. It takes a couple of personnel to bring it down, uh, set up. And we also carry our small 20 pound typical grill tank propane. It's actually used as a pilot for the Red Dragon, uh, if you're not familiar, just because you're gonna to have to burn that lit vapor at first to have a light source, and now you can burn off all the liquid that's coming in from the, the problem tank. So something unique that we carry on here is a four and six inch uh, squeeze tool for polyethylene lines. Uh, we haven't ran into an active leak where we've used these yet. But we do have multiple uh, transverse lines that run throughout the county. And with all the construction going on, you know, there's always the risk of those lines getting uh, nicked. So we have different feet we can put on this and it will squeeze them in. Definitely nice, a lot quicker than if mm -hmm. you had to do something like a, like a Band-Aid mitigation. That's just a simple, you know, when you, when you put the, 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 the bar up top, you're so far away that you can easily close it without getting into the, uh, the hot zone. On this side, we have a lot of our rope rescue. We have some edge protection. We have a Kootenai pulley, a Gibbs ascender. This is kind of just extra things, kind of obscure rope scenarios that we might need some gear. We keep 200 foot rope bags and 400 foot rope bags, both main and belay. Those are our main uh, life safety rope. We have a pre-made hall safe, five to one. Beneath that, we're gonna have our actual confined space packs. We have four of them on here. Yep. Simple over the shoulder sling. Great for getting into uh, those tight spaces. We keep our uh, escape packs for a maximum of 300 feet entry. Um, that's enough time for that air bottle. If something were to happen detrimental, you can escape without losing your air. We have a sked, and we actually carry two skeds. Th this one is for rope rescue, so it's got three-point harness, more security. If you were to lower and raise somebody, say, out of a large tank or, or something to where you needed to immobilize the spine, and down low, we also have another sked that we could use for our own personal hazmat rescue. If one of us were, were to go down in a level A, just something simple that we can move ourselves onto and then just pull them out like a, like a sled. Uh, we have our confined space fan right here. Inside of this is gonna be our hose that we're gonna drop down actually into the confined space itself. Ventilation is one of the first things we do alongside with metering. Uh, we found it to be the uh, most effective way a lot of times that you can even get someone to self-rescue in that environment and get themselves out. This is our Stokes basket. It's a little bit newer and it's really nice because it can break into two pieces with a simple twist lock. That way if for some reason we had to make access multiple stories you don't necessarily have to have two people carrying this up some stairs. We can break it into two pieces bring more gear with us in fact as we go up mm -hmm. so just for efficiency down low we have our larkin frame as a artificial high point 
it's kind of been the bread and butter for, for our team as far as making access. And we've had it for years at this point. Uh, we've used it on multiple rescues. We've recently acquired the Arizona Vortex, which if you're not familiar, it can do a multitude of things. It can become a tripod, it can become an easel. So similar to the Larkin, it can, it can make an artificial high point. It can also be made as a bipod, monopod, but we kind of use it for just its basic functions. Uh, because like I said, our, our main principle with rope is we just try to keep it simple, keep it quick. So halfback, like we would use that uh, for confined space to the point where we're transitioning from horizontal rescue to now we have to bring them up vertical rescue. We can attach them to the halfback, lift them up that way keeping them immobilized in a small profile. That wraps up the first part of our visit with Station 35 and the Squad 2 tour. Next we visit the training facility with new firefighters for propane flare training. Thanks for watching. Be sure to get in touch and let us know what you'd like to see on future Hazmat Roadshow TV segments as we travel throughout North America. Like and subscribe so we can continue to help Hazmat teams and first responders every day. See you on scene with Hazmat Roadshow TV.